Welcome to this radio video and uh, today we're going to talk about actually we're starting a new series where we're talking about the different abbreviations, the different modes and the different things you'll find on receivers from uh, the different modes to the different uh, you know functions of a receiver, things that some receivers have and don't, others don't, uh, like for example the AGC like uh, the noise blanker, like, uh, you know, what is dynamic range and selectivity, sensitivity. And, uh, you know, it's not going to be too technical. I'm going to try to really put it as simple as possible. So uh, really a series of videos coming up. If you want to understand a little more than just, you know, tuning Radio Romania and not really worrying how come I'm receiving it or not, so um, this is an idea that came from uh, one of my viewers uh, that sent me a message and said, you know, I bought a receiver, a little lost about some of the uh, different buttons that say things like, uh, like I just said, you know, AGC, which is automatic gain control, uh, NB, which is a noise blanker, what's an AF gain, what's um, the IF shift. And, you know, while I'm at it, why not add what's AM, what's FM, what's SSB, CW, and wide FM, or WFM, and we'll go, you know, with the flow and try to explain these as simple as possible, because this is not going to be a technical course, this is just going to be a general idea so that you can understand a little bit what, um, you know, these things do. So today the first one is going to be about AM. AM is not on every radio uh, something that you'll see necessarily it's really kind of a you can almost say it's a default mode because AM is really really radio at its simplest form um, for a lot of people AM means listening to the AM radio that's in North America we have this um, you know way of saying that we're listening to AM radio and uh, you know in Europe they've actually used the real term which is medium wave and AM is not a band it's a type of transmission it's a type of modulation and for some reason in North America AM always means the AM band but you know what what you're listening to on shortwave Radio Romania, Radio of any Cuba, and so on. These are in AM mode. So AM is not a band, but a mode of transmission. And it's used in mostly in uh, long wave, medium wave, and short wave. Now, the reason that it is used there is if we go way back in the first days of radio, when the first stations came on the air. To send out voice AM was the simplest form of transmission for voice and it was also the simplest way for a radio to receive a voice transmission and music. It required very little electronics to actually work. So AM means amplitude modulation. It means that what actually we are sending out is variations in the, we could say the strength of a signal. Um, you know, in an AM signal, we have uh, a carrier, which is a basic signal. So if you look at in the middle here, there's a line. And you can think of that line as a carrier. So when you're listening, for example, to a station that doesn't broadcast any music or any voice, just dead air, you still notice that your S meter is actually moving because there's something. The radio is still receiving something. That's the carrier. It is sent with the audio, but you know, if there's no audio, all you'll receive is no sound, an empty carrier, just there, and with the carrier, we usually have voice information, and it's the amplitude. That is, on each side of the carrier, the different 
uh, variations that voice and music will create upon the signal. Most AM signals are sent with double, um, you can say that there's like an upper and a lower sideband to that signal. It means that the amplitude of the signal is on both sides of the carrier, upwards and downwards. But there could be AM signals that will actually have amplitude only on one side. It does exist. So um, it is really the most popular uh, type of signal in the low frequencies. And it is also one of the types of transmissions that is uh, probably very sensitive, the most sensitive to noise also. That's why in the 50s, FM radio came along for uh, you know a number of reasons, but one of them was that FM seemed to be static free compared to AM. And it is true that AM is very sensitive to noise and interference. Now, uh, if you have a portable receiver, then you probably see that there's uh, AM and FM, and that's it. So it means that when you switch from one to the other, well, you change mode, and AM is one of the modes that exists. And you'll notice that when you're on AM, you're listening to either shortwave or the medium wave broadcast band, or in Europe, you can listen to the long wave broadcast band. It's a very, very popular mode for low frequencies because it also takes uh, not too much space on the spectrum. So typically, an AM signal is about, and this is a very general about, about 5 or 6 kilohertz large. It means that when you're on, let's say, uh, listening to Radio of Any Cuba on 6,000 kilohertz, uh, the AM modulation at its peaks when the, 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 the voice is the strongest, um, basically will be about two and a half to three kilohertz on each side. That's why you can tune an AM signal, for example, on 6,000 kilohertz, but if you tune to 6,001, you'll still hear the signal because it does take a, you know, a, a bandwidth on the short wave and medium wave and long wave bands. So um, that bandwidth is what really gives richness to the AM mode. If you squeeze the bandwidth, if you would give AM less bandwidth, well then you'd see that the frequencies, the audio that you're listening to, would be cut. Why? Because there's not enough space for information on the AM signal. So uh, this is really the basic of all modes. Uh, there's of course more basic, but I mean when I say basic, I mean for transmitting information that has voice music in it. And it is still used because it is not too complex to actually transmit and not too complex to receive. The um, bad side of AM is its sensitivity to interference. It's much more sensitive to interference than FM, for example. It is also uh, costly because you need that center, central carrier here all the time. It means that you are actually spending money, spending energy to send a carrier along with the voice information. So um, when you look at the amplitude modulation of an AM signal, you see here the peaks. The peaks actually tell you that the size of the signal, the amplitude of that signal, is actually bigger when the, 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 the voice or the music or the sounds that are transmitted are louder. So the largest AM signal will have the loudest sounds. And if you actually cut off the sounds and just leave the carrier on, you'll see that the AM signal without any sound actually takes very little space. And it's really the sounds that make it 
take all that bandwidth. So uh, it's a little technical. I hope you guys followed through. This is the first thing that you'll see. So if you have a radio lying around and you see AM, now, of course, AM in North America for a lot of people means the AM band. But think a little farther. AM is actually a mode of transmission. It's the way that a signal is sent on the medium wave band and also on shortwave. There aren't really any AM signals above 30 megahertz. Um, it's a mode that is not used on high frequencies on VHF and UHF. It is mostly below 30 megahertz. I've actually never, uh, well, no, wrong. There's one thing about AM that is used, and it's the uh, VHF airband. Um, you'll notice that the AM mode is used in the VHF airband, which I was always uh, almost forgetting here. It's probably the, one of the only bands, the uh, VHF airband and also the UHF airband in the 200 and uh, you know 300 megahertz range are the, probably the two, la the two only frequency bands above 30 megahertz that use AM. And there's a reason for that also. Uh, even though AM mode is prone to interference, it also has uh, an interesting little detail in very, very weak signals. It technically is easier to receive an AM signal and still understand the content than it would be on FM. And that's one of the reasons why the air bands, the airplanes actually use AM mode on the VHF and UHF range. Uh, it's a question of interference and um, a question of, you know, being understood. Because if you notice an AM signal that gets weak is still understood, but an FM signal that gets weak is very static so it's kind of more difficult to actually understand what's being said. So that's the first term that we'll talk about, or that we've just talked about. Uh, hope that uh, it's uh, understood, AM mode, and uh, we'll go through different modes, then we'll go through different terms used in radio. So follow along if you want to learn a little more about radio, and uh, hopefully, um, the explanation wasn't too complicated for you guys. So uh, thanks for watching.